with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So I really fucked myself up yesterday. After I did the podcast, things just got worse. It was hard to tell what the fuck was going on. I thought I just fucked my back up or my rib or something like that or pulled a muscle because there was that pain after my kettle belling, but it progressively got worse and worse And by about like 8 o'clock at night, I could barely breathe. I could barely fucking take like 40% breath. It was just like... (gasps) And like phlegm was coming up and shit. And when I was trying to take deep breaths, like take it all the way in, I was getting some severe chest pain in my left side. I would say almost exactly where my heart is. If you said, where are you feeling the pain? I would have said directly in the middle of my heart. And it seemed to be getting worse. It felt like a pinched nerve in my back, but I couldn't fucking pinpoint exactly where the pain was. But the main symptoms were a tight chest, shortness of breath, and a sore heart. So I was a little bit concerned, but I would have just ridden it out. I would have just dealt with the pain and hoped I didn't die in my sleep. But everyone else saw I was uncomfortable and they're like, where's the pain? And I'm like, it's kind of like in my left side of my chest. They're like, where your heart is. I'm like, yeah, around that area. They're like, are you breathing all right? I'm like, nah, I'm not really breathing all right either. And then everyone fucking panicked because there's been so many fucking heart attacks lately. They're like, you've got to go to the hospital. And I'm like, no, I don't need to go to the hospital. It's just some fucking back thing. But there was enough pain... And my breathing was so fucking weird that I wasn't resisting too much. Normally, I would resist hard. Normally, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to the fucking hospital. What are those fucking quacks going to know? I actually don't mind going to the hospital. Hospitals are different to GPs. Generally, hospitals know what the fuck they're doing. And if you do end up fucking needing to go to hospital, you're already there. So what's the point of going to a GP? And GPs, if you're listening... I'm not saying your fucking eight years or ten years at medical school is worthless. All I'm saying is I can fucking Google it now. Or alternatively, just ignore it until I need to go to the hospital. They're my two game plans. Google and ignore. So when the family was saying you've got to go to the hospital, I wasn't resisting as much as I normally would. I'm like, all right, let's go to the hospital. So we go down to the hospital. On the way, my wife's yelling at me the whole time for some reason. She thinks I'm having a heart attack, but that hasn't stopped her from yelling at me the whole fucking way because I said something along the lines of, I'm not going to take nutritional and fucking health advice from your fat auntie. (laughs) Something like that. Because I exercise and I fast, I'm not fat anymore, but what happens is when you lose weight, people remember your face when it was fat and bloated. And in India, fat and bloated is a sign of good health. So everyone here, all the aunties and uncles that have met me before, when I was fat and bloated and darting and drinking and on the verge of diabetes, look at me now and think I look sick, like I'm emaciated or something like that. People's idea of health here is pretty fucked up. But it does happen when you start losing weight. You start looking a little bit different, even a little bit gaunt. But who gives a fuck? That's fine. So when I was leaving... The aunties were yelling at me saying, no more fasting, you've got to eat more, you've got to put on some weight, you've got to stop exercising. (laughs) This is the fucking Indian way. And I was a little bit pissed off at this and I was like, I'm not fucking taking fucking advice from your fat diabetic auntie. And so that kicked my wife off. So I got abused all the way to the hospital while she thought I might be having a heart attack. That's how much she cares. So we get to the hospital and as soon as I walked into the hospital, it started really fucking hurting. My chest was like painful. My shortness of breath was getting worse. I was like, maybe I've just been postponing this heart attack until I get to the hospital. And now I know I'm here. I can just fucking let rip. So they put me on the fucking bed and I'm starting to get paranoid now. They're like, let's take an ECG. I still don't even know what that is but they put all those suction things on your chest and they were having a hard time at that because I got a hairy fucking chest. They put something on like your wrists, your fucking ankles and all that and they take some fucking measurements of something. So I did that. That only took like two minutes. That came back 
everything was pretty much fine. Something was a little bit slow. They were a little bit worried that one of my fucking something was blocked or something, but they weren't that worried. My resting heart rate was 51. Something like that. I was fine. I knew I was fine too. I just wanted to double check. So there was something a little bit slow that came up on the ECG, if that's what it's called. I don't know. I didn't look into that ECG thing. Anyway, they're like, let's just double check that there's no damage. We'll do a tryponine 1 or something. Tryponine I fucking enzyme test. So that tryponine, it's some fucking thing, enzyme, I think, that's found in the muscles of your heart. And it's not usually found in your blood. But if you're having a heart attack, the muscle of your heart gets damaged and it releases this tryponine shit into your bloodstream. And if they find it in your blood, they know you either recently had a heart attack or are having a heart attack right now. So they did that blood test. That came back fine. It's actually not bad doing all these tests. At least it takes like the paranoia away from you. Because I would have been up all night last night thinking I was about to have a heart attack. And I probably would have induced one with my stress. So in the end, there was no problem with my heart. But my fucking lungs are fucked. I don't know what's going on. I've been coughing up shit all day. I could barely sleep last night. I couldn't sleep on one side of my body. On the right side, when I slept on the right side, I could breathe fully in and out. It was fine. I turned on the left side, just full fucking pain. And I could breathe in like 20%. Whatever I've got, it's the strangest fucking injury. It's kettlebell lung st- <laughs> It's kettlebell lung syndrome. When you try and blast out too many fucking ket swings and your whole body starts shutting down. I'm still not right either. I can't fucking lie down. I can still barely breathe. I can't breathe deep, which is fucking driving me nuts. I feel like I've got emphysema. I'm real fucking congested. It's fucked. I'm no good as a sick person either. I can't fucking just barrel through. I'm always looking for excuses to do nothing anyway. So when I'm given one, I take full advantage of it. I need to be in 100% health all the time. Otherwise, I just will not do anything. Like if you asked me how I was feeling, I would say I'm about 30% of my normal self. I'm like the B and the O of (laughs) Boyle. I'm like the B and the O of Boyle. But if you ask someone else, like a female or someone who's willing to push through a little bit harder, they would say they're about 97%. I'm just not someone who's going to push through something mild like this without complaining. And then last night when I got home, I fucking watched this movie on Netflix, 14 Peaks, which is just fucking mind-blowing. This fucking Nepalese Sherpa guy climbed all 14 fucking 8,000 meter plus peaks in the world in under seven months the previous record holder was like seven years but i'm watching that i'm watching 14 peaks and the cunt almost died like 10 times but i'm watching it and i'm going i would love to test myself like that see what i'm really made of i would love to put myself in a life or death situation like that and just see if i can push through meanwhile i'm watching it i'm under a blankie i'm propped up by about 12 pillows and I'm wincing. I'm making so many noises when I'm turning side to side that the cunt from fucking 14 Peaks could probably hear me from the bottom. It's quite amazing how delusional I am because I was really thinking I probably would have made eight of those peaks. I don't think I would have got all 14, but probably eight. I don't even want to go up 14 fucking hills or even inclines. A slight incline, fuck that. Anyway, hopefully I'm back to 100% better tomorrow. Otherwise, nothing's going to get done tomorrow either. And I need to be getting some shit done, so I can't afford to lose another day. So that's it for tonight. I'm going to get back under the blankie. I'm going to have a little rest, and I'm going to fucking come back tomorrow with the thunder. If you're enjoying the podcast, share it around with your friends, and I'll see you the fuck later.